bombs have destroyed hundreds of thousands of buildings in our cities and damaged many more. Since 1939, nothing has been built that was not needed directly for war. We've gone without all the new homes, schools, cinemas and shops we talked about before 1939. Now we're talking again of what we need and planning how to get it as soon as possible. Planning to replace our blitzed buildings, to clear away our slums, and to make our towns worth living in. To carry out all these plans will take more builders than we've got. We want houses quickly, and if they're to be built, we must have many thousands more builders. What's the answer? One of the answers is training. Training now to have skilled craftsmen ready as soon as possible. All over the country, schools of a secondary type are being opened to train boys of 13 and 14 who want to become builders. They get a general and scientific training covering a variety of subjects. The practical side is equally important and each week some time is spent in the workshops. In the brick workshop, we learn different ways of using and laying bricks. We learn the use of the trial, straight edge, plumb rule, spirit level, square and many other tools. Sometimes we work in pairs to build walls and other parts of buildings which have to be made to exact measurements, just as they are on a real job. Bricklaying is a very important trade. There are many different methods of building, but there will always be room in the building industry for good bricklayers. In the plasterer's shop, one of the jobs you learn is ornamental plaster work. When you first get it, Plaster is a powder and has to be mixed to a smooth paste with water. Then it can be shaped by running a mould over it while it's setting. As well as making these mouldings, we learn to put plaster onto the rough walls. This needs a lot of practice because you have to have a very flexible wrist. The first coat is called the rendering coat. The one that goes on top of the rendering coat to give a smooth finish is called the setting coat. On Wednesday afternoon, we go to the mason's shop. A mason's bench is called a banker and it is covered with felt or a fine layer of stone dust to protect the edges of the stone. The type of stone worked by a student mason is a soft one at first, but later he may use harder ones such as Portland and York stone. Carpentry and joinery is the woodwork trade. In the joiner shop, we learn to make joints, which we use later in doors, window frames and other woodwork. Our instructor watches over the work we are doing and sees that we learn the correct way to use the different tools. There are special tools, like this rabbit plane, for special jobs, as well as all the ordinary ones. shop is very noisy because many of us are boss in lead which is shaping it by beating it with special tools. A bossing stick is used to work the metal 
to the required shape. You can join lead by using an oxyacetylene flame. This is called lead burning. Our instructor watches to see that we do everything the right way. This is a method of sealing the end of a large pipe. The solder is heated and wiped with a moleskin pad to close the pipe. Here is a four inch lead pipe that has been bent. This is called dummying and it knocks out the dents made in bending the pipe. Nobody can be an expert plumber and carpenter and painter and plasterer and all the other jobs. It isn't possible. So, when you've had a chance to find out something about each job and decide which you like best, you must concentrate on the one you choose and learn all you can about it. This will usually be towards the end of your course. You'll spend more time in the workshops and you'll do more complicated practical work. In the workshop, you learn how. In the classroom, you learn why. This is a class in building construction, and it deals with why you do things in the different building trades. Uh, can you tell me what the wall plate is for? Well, to save nailing the joists through the slates onto the brickwork. That's part of the answer, but uh, there's more to it than that. Well, now, just uh, look at the board for a moment, and I'll try and clear that up. Now, you'd better all listen to this. Give me your attention for a moment. There seems to be just a slight doubt about the wall plate. The object of the wall plate is to support the load of the floor so that it's equally distributed over the entire length of the sleeper wall. Your general education is also taken care of. This may seem like ordinary school lessons until you find that here too you're learning something that adds to your knowledge of building. Let's see what you found out about the source of supply of timber used in building. Can you tell me where we get the uh, soft woods? Yes, Holdsworth? Canada and the Baltic countries. Yes, and can you tell me the names of these Baltic countries? It must pass through the point of contact. And that principle we use in drawing this three-centered arch, a shape which you will meet very frequently in building. The bricks in each portion radiate from the center from which that portion has been struck. This science class is experimenting with limestone, heating it, weighing it, and then adding water to it. Lime is used in building materials such as mortar, and a builder must know how it reacts to heat and moisture. A builder has to be able to read plans. Often he has to draw them. Therefore, drawing, not only design for the painters and decorators, but constructional and workshop drawing, is important. All the time you're at the school, you learn a great deal about the theory and practice of the different building trades. But you still don't know much about working in the building industry, nor probably the exact job you want to aim at. Suppose we take a close look at a construction job. Perhaps it'd be better if we chose something a little more simple than this. Here are two farm cottages. They're very typical jobs of building, so let's look at them in detail. First, there's the land itself. 
if it has never been built on before, there may be no accurate details available about it. A surveyor takes measurements and levels so that the cottages can be put in the most suitable position. When the architect has produced his design, draftsmen in his office make working plans to guide the builder. From them, the cost of the job can be worked out and lists of all the materials can be drawn up. Then the builder takes over. Equipment and materials are delivered and the site is prepared. The trench outlines the walls of the two cottages. First, it is partly filled with concrete to form a foundation for the walls. The bricklayers then raise the corners of the building. These give them fixed points to work from as they raise the outer walls. Soon, frames mark the position of doors and windows. Floor joists are fixed when the walls reach ground and first floor levels. Scaffolding becomes necessary now for the builders to work on. Gradually, behind this framework, the houses take shape. Next comes the roof. The timbering is put up by the carpenters. Here are the rafters being nailed in place. The roof is always put on as early as possible because it keeps the inside of the house dry and allows work to be done there even when it's raining outside. Lengthwise across the rafters go batten. When they're all fixed, the toiler starts work. Each tile has a nib, a curved end which hooks over the batten. Every fourth row of tiles is nailed to hold it firm. Now the roof is finished and the gutters and rainwater pipes are fixed and connected up with the drains which were laid at the same time as the foundations. The outside is practically finished now, but inside there's still a lot of work to be done. All the floorboards are being laid and stairs fitted so that people can move about. The plasters get to work, rendering first of all the ceilings. Then they render the walls. This rendering coat must be true to get rid of any unevenness in the brickwork. When this coat has had time to dry, a setting coat goes on top of it, sometimes two coats. This is left to dry and then damped and troweled to leave a very smooth surface for a distemper or wallpaper finish. A 
Electricity and water must be brought into the houses and kitchen and bathroom equipment installed. The plumber has cut, joined and fitted all the necessary pipes and now he is connecting up the fixtures. In the meantime, the joiners have been fixing skirting boards and cover molds round the door frames. Cupboards have to be built in as well and all the general woodwork which has to be fitted on the spot. Now complete units on the other hand such as doors and window frames can be made in advance in the contractor's joinery shop. When they arrive at the site, they are ready for fitting right away with very little adjustment. So, job following job, the house gets built. Inside and outside, the finishing touch will be the final coat of paint. Then the site is cleared up and the cottages are ready to be lived in. Of course, building methods and materials vary, but we can take our two farm cottages as fairly typical. Now, you'll learn a great deal in your school workshops, but before you can be really useful on a proper job, you'll need much more experience and practice. How are you going to get it? You probably notice these boys at work on the cottages, some of them not much older than you. They're apprentices. They're engaged or apprenticed in their respective trades for between three and five years, dependent on a period of school training. You too can be apprenticed when you leave the building school, earning a steady living and still learning while you work with older and more skilled men. During this apprenticeship period, you'll also get one day a week off, with pay, to attend your local technical school. Here you can carry on with the studies you started at school and you can work for exams and certificates which will help you to earn more money and improve your prospects. The building industry has room for more than 15,000 apprentices each year. When your training is finished, you'll be able to tackle any skilled job in your own trade. You'll have the knowledge to take additional responsibilities if you wish. But whatever work you do in the building industry, as a practical craftsman, as a foreman or clerk of works, or as a specialist, remember that yours will be an essential job. Look around you. and office buildings. These buildings could not have been built without craftsmen. Many more buildings are urgently needed and we must have more skilled men to build them.